If you go down to the seaside in Britain today, you are almost guaranteed to see a relic from World War II, a relic that is both rare but also still serving an important purpose. But I think you have probably either not noticed it, or if you have, hardly given it a thought. So what am I talking about? Is it the pillbox, those handy little concrete bunkers built to fend off a German invasion? No, though they are to be found all along the coastline. Is it the air raid siren? No, though a few remain along the coast for flood warning purposes. In fact, it is a potent World War II relic that is so much a part of the seaside landscape that no one even notices any more. It is the sea mine. Visit virtually any seaside town in Britain and you will probably find one of these jolly red and white painted mines just behind the beach. It is incredible that a metal object from a conflict almost 80 years ago still persists, these mines being really the last World War II weapons still found in public today. So what's the story behind these objects that we've all seen on visits to the beach, but probably never really seen? Today there are about 60 such mines scattered around the British coast. They are all World War II British naval mines, and their purpose is to raise money for charity. So which charity are we talking about? The Shipwrecked Mariners Society. This was founded in 1839 and during World War II provided immediate financial assistance to shipwrecked sailors. This was during the Battle of the Atlantic, when German U-boats almost drove Britain to starvation as supply ships bringing food and other vital commodities from North and South America were slaughtered on a vast scale. Merchant seamen bore the brunt of the casualties. Also, mines played a big part in the losses as well, particularly among fishing boats and other small coastal craft that hit German naval mines. The Society provided immediate financial assistance to shipwreck survivors arriving in Britain, helping them get clothing, food, accommodation, and, importantly, rail passes to get home to families and loved ones. Though the war is of course long over, the Society's job isn't, and today this small charity supports ex-fishermen, merchant mariners and their dependents, who are in need and those injured or too ill to continue working at sea. So the mines are really collecting tins for the charity. The idea of using naval mines for this purpose originated in 1949. In that year, the Royal Navy had an astounding 14,933 World War II era sea mines in storage. The Admiralty donated 200 deactivated mines to the Shipwreck Mariner Society, and repainted, they were set up along the coast as collection boxes. It's amazing that 60 of these mines still remain in service today, the rest having been scrapped or sold off to collectors. They are of two types, the Mark 14 and the Mark 17 sea mine, the classic naval mines of movie fame. Originally, each mine was attached by a length of chain to a heavy sinker, and in this way they were sewn by mine-laying ships in fields around the coast, floating a few feet below the surface, and they were magnetic weapons, the mine's metal horns being attracted to the metal hulls of ships. The explosive power was tremendous, and many still lurk in the seas around Britain today, uncleared after the war, and occasionally washed ashore or tangled in some trawlerman's nets. They keep many naval and army bomb disposal units quite busy. Here, for example, is a demonstration of the explosive power being detonated at sea in the Solent on the south coast of England. So, the next time you pass one of these old World War II relics as you go to fetch an ice cream, spare a thought for what it represents, and perhaps drop a few coins through the special hole cut in its casing. Last year, the Shipwreck Mariners Society distributed £1.4 million to 2,200 people in need, and some of that money came from the 60 old sea mines dotting the coastline. 
But what about German mines? The German Air Force and Navy laid thousands around the British coast into supposedly mine-free channels and into the ports to catch the unwary ships. Are any German mines used for the same purpose of collecting money for charity? The answer is yes. Several German mines are still used in Britain today. Old examples come ashore every so often. This old German mine still lies today beneath the white cliffs of Dover, a forgotten relic. Outside a fish and chip shop in Weymouth in Dorset, an intact German Z mine has been converted into a charity box, raising funds for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, the RNLI. It's been in use since 1953, and though stolen several times, most recently in 2012, it's always been recovered and put back into service. A live German mine washed up on the bank of the Kuckmere River at Ulfriston in Sussex in 1943, five miles from the sea, having drifted inland. Deactivated by the Royal Navy, it was turned into a charity box in the Market Square to aid the Red Cross Fund for prisoners of war. Stolen in 1957, it was recovered intact and today sits outside the old chapel centre, raising money for a local medical charity. There are probably others across Britain doing the same silent but vital work. The use of the naval mine for charity collection I think is a great idea, for they represent as a weapon one of the greatest World War II threats to Britain, but because of their size and shape are very visible sentinels today. And as I said at the beginning of this video, one of only a handful of visible reminders of World War II that can be seen all over Britain in 2021. And the good news is, a few more are going back into service, having been refurbished rather than scrapped by volunteers and placed back on public display to collect money. So the Red Naval Mines joined the remaining air raid sirens, still functioning as flood warning, chemical and nuclear disaster warning sirens in the UK in 2021. Two examples of wartime objects that are still performing a function over seven decades after they were made. Do check out the end screen for a link to my video about air raid sirens. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.